Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture introducing you to citation in history. Today we will go over the Chicago Manual of Style slash Turabian format. Now for many of you guys, you've never heard of the Chicago Manual Style or Turabian as it's called because in high school they mainly focus on Modern Language Association or MLA or the American Psychological Association APA formats. But Chicago Manual Style Turabian is a format that's been around since the turn of the 1900s. The Chicago Manual Style was first published in 1906 by the University of Chicago Press. It was designed to help people that were writing books or editing books and publishing books. And the University of Chicago has a very famous um, publishing house called the University of Chicago Press. This is abbreviated. A lot of times you'll see it as CMOS or CMS. I usually use CMS in my abbreviations, but either one is correct. But most of the time it's simply referred to as Chicago. You'll hear Chicago style. Currently, beginning in 2017, we are in its 17th edition. Now, some people will ask, why is it called Chicago Manual Style slash Turabian? Well, Turabian is a simplified version of Chicago Manual of Style. It was first published in 1937. Usually, it's just referred to as Turabian because it was written by a woman by the name of Kate Turabian. Turabian was a graduate uh, school dis dissertation secretary at the University of Chicago. Um, she served for a very long time, 1930 to 1958. And she found that the Chicago Manual of Style was very large and cumbersome for students to be carrying around all the time. And a lot of the things that are in the Chicago Manual of Style, like Library of Congress information and front matter, are just not something that students would need to use on a daily basis. So she decided to create a manual for writers of research papers, theses, and dissertations. It is essentially, as the cover says, it's Chicago style for students and researchers. Currently, it's in its ninth edition. The ninth edition and the 17th edition are exactly the same. So if you use the Chicago Manual of Style or you use Turabian, there is no difference between the two other than one book is three to four inches wide and one is about an inch, inch and a half wide. First, I would like to go over how you cite within the text of the document. And what we do in Chicago style is called notes. There are two different types of citation in the Chicago Manual style. There are notes bibliography, and there are in-text uh, author slash date. Author slash date is used for things like uh, social sciences and science, but for everything else, including history, we use the notes bibliography format. So when we talk about this portion of citation, I keep referring to it as in text. That does not mean it goes in the text of the paper. It means that it is inside the written part of the paper. Okay, it is not within the actual text, but it is within where all that information is. So you will use what we call footnotes or endnotes, not in text citation like you would in MLA or APA. Now, anytime you use source material, whether it's quoted or not, you must credit your sources. Any information that you did not come up with on your own has to be cited. This is essentially what we consider to be showing your work like you would in math. This is how we determine how you came to the conclusions that you did. In many ways, I like to discuss citation as um, a cooking, um, making something on the stove or baking. And in this case, citation notes are your recipe. This is how you got to where you are um, through your research project. Now, the only difference between footnotes and endnotes are where they're located. Footnotes go at the bottom of the page that you cite the information. Footnotes are located at the end of the document before the bibliography. Now, the first time you use a citation, a specific entry, you use what we call the formal long version. This includes all the information that you're required to use. 
Now, any other time after that first time that you use that entry, that specific entry, you can then use what we call the short version entry. You must remember that every time you cite a source, you have to cite it again, meaning if you cited it on page one, you use it again on page two, you have to cite it again, and you have to use a different number. Numerals are always in numerical order, one, two, three, four. They never repeat and they never jump around. A lot of students like to play a game I call cita citation match game, where they create a list of sources at the back of their paper and they number them and then they jump around. So your citations might be three, two, five, seven, one, six, two, five, one. That is technically incorrect. Um, the way that you would do it is that every single time you do it, you do a new citation. So it has to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way through to the end of your paper. Now, different types of sources do use a slightly different format. So if you cite a book, you may have to cite a journal and the journal will be a, a little bit different format because it has different information like magazine number or date or, or um, the pages within the magazine that you are using. So it's always important to consult one of the Chicago Turabian guides for examples. Now, when you use a quote, you should be citing it after the sentence. So for example, if you have a paragraph and you have a direct quote in the middle of that paragraph, the citation for the quote should be at the end of that sentence. Otherwise, if you are just generally citing the information at the end of the paragraph, this is where I got the information that helped me write this paragraph, it's okay for you to cite all the information for that paragraph in a note at the end of that paragraph. And I'll show you on the next couple of slides how that works. Now here is a sample page out of a written work where you can kind of see how the citations are set up. So for example, if you look at the first paragraph, there are no direct quotes in that first paragraph. So at the end of the paragraph, you'll see a one. Notice that the one is superscript. It is smaller and slightly raised um, from the regular print. When you're reading that and you see that one, that tells you to look down to the end of the page. I did these all in footnote format. It's just easier to do to show you how to, to do it on one screen. You look down to the one and you see the citation there. Now notice how the citation is set up. It is the author's first and last name followed by a comma. So in this case, Giles McDonald. Then the title of the book. In this case, the book is The Last Kaiser, The Life and Times of Wilhelm II. Notice that the title is italicized. It is correct that you either underline or italicize book titles. Now, the next thing you will notice is the publication information. Publication information must be within parentheses. So you will put the place of publication. In this case, it's New York, colon, the publisher, which is St. Martin's Press, comma, and then the date, 2000. Then you close the parentheses and put a comma. Now this is usually okay. Most students get this part, I'd say 50% of the students get this part down. Here is where the problem lies. After that comma, you then have to put the specific page number, you got the information. So in the case of this book, it's page 398. Now, why do you have to put the page number for the citation? Well, the entire point of the citation is for your reader to be able to cross-reference your information quickly and efficiently. They should be able to go right to where you got that information so they can then turn around and see it for themselves. Now let's look at paragraph number two. Now, if you notice, paragraph number two is, has a sentence that says, he hoped this step would convince U.S. President Woodrow Wilson and the other allied leaders of the German government's sincere reform efforts 
comma, which would lead to, quote, a fair and just peace, end quote. Now, since this is a direct quote, I have cited it after the actual sentence. And you see two there. Look down at the bottom. This is from a primary source written by Sigurd von Eiselman. Um, the book title is Der Kaiser in Holland. Um, publication Munich at the Biderstein Verlag um, in um, 1968. Close parentheses. This was volume one of the work. So you would put a Roman numeral one. You only do that in multi-volume works. And then it was on page 16. So the third um, paragraph, or the, I mean, sorry, the third note is at the end of the second paragraph and you see it there. Um, and that refers to this Alfred Niemann, Kaiser und Revolution, Berlin, Ernst Roholt, Verlag, 1922. And notice that it, this comes from multiple pages, pages 32, comma, 34 through 35, and 42 through 43. If that paragraph comes from multiple pages within the text, that is how you would set it up. You would do multiple pages, um, you know, if it's one page, 32. If it's multiple pages, you do 34 through 35 or 36. And same thing, 42 through 43. Notice here um, at the last sentence of paragraph three, it begins, she began by asking, quote, had the fatherland, for, had, had God forsaken the fatherland for? Now notice that the sentence is not over yet. Keep that in mind when we look at the next slide. Now this slide is a continuation of the previous page. And so I want to point out how a few things work on here. So look at four. Now the reason why four is in the middle of the paragraph is again because there was a direct quote at the um, end of that sentence in the last page. But since the sentence continued on onto this page, that is why note four is going to be on the bottom of this page, not the last page. Now, if you look at it, notice that it's only last name, comma, page number. That is because we have already used the Alfred Neiman uh, citation in the second or third um, note Therefore, now that we are using it again, all you have to do is use the short form. Now there's two different ways to do this. There's last name comma page number, which is how I normally do it, or last name comma book title page number. The only time I ever do that is when I have um, an author that's written multiple books on my bibliography. You don't have to do that Chicago Manual style they flip-flop, they say you do or you don't. Um, it's a matter of taste, but you should use the short form um, moving forward. Now, at the end of the fifth paragraph, or at the, at the end of this paragraph, I believe this is actually technically the third paragraph, but you'll see a note number five. Notice that Eiselman 1, 16. Eiselman Volume 116, we've already used that entry, so we're using the short form. Then I have a semicolon. That is because more than one source has influenced this paragraph. So the other source is McDonald. Um, we use that as citation number one. Therefore, we go ahead and use the short form, which is last name, comma, page number. But I used a third source. And this was a source that I did not use in one through four. So this would need the full citation. This is a article. This is a article. And so you would need to use, you would need to use the article format which is slightly different, slightly different than a book format. Now, if you notice, if you notice how it's set up, 
it's the author's first and last name followed by a comma and then the article is written within quotation marks article titles are never underlined or italicized they are always within quotation marks so in this case the article's name is empress august victoria and the fall of the german monarchy comma you then close the quotes and then you follow it with the journal or um the journal or magazine article in this case it's the american historical review that would be underlined or italicized because american historical review is the actual book then in parentheses you put the month and date or the date depending on what information they give you of the journal comma and then you would give the specific page number that you got the information now here is a second example of how you would cite the notes um, this is later on in this particular work and if you notice number 56 and number 57 are both in the middle of the paragraph again the reason why is because they are direct quotes 56 comes from a speech hitler gave in 1934 so if you look down on 56 the um, title of the work is hitler's speech to the reichstag um, and he gave that speech on january 30th 1934. now 57 um is a direct quote from another author that author is giles mcdonald we have already used his work earlier in the paper so we will use the short form last name comma page number period now at the end of that paragraph um, you do see a number 58 and 58 is a totally new work that we have not used yet within the paper so if you notice we then go back to doing the long formal version first name last name comma the title of the book the life of crown prince william and then the publication information within um within parentheses city pittsburgh colon the university of pittsburgh press comma and then the date 1961 you then close the parentheses comma and then the page numbers i got that specific information which would be pages 187 and 188. now if you look at the next paragraph there are no direct quotes so there is no citation within the actual text itself just at the end of the paragraph and that paragraph was obviously influenced again by klaus jonas's work the life of crown prince william and so since I already used it in 58 for citation number 59 we would use the short form which is last name comma page number period so now that we have gone over how to do the citations within the paper we now have to look at the reference page and in the Chicago manual of style the preferred format for listing your sources is a bibliography page now i want to be clear that first this should always be labeled either bibliography or references you never call this a works cited page there is no such thing as a works cited page in chicago manual of style a works cited is modern language association or mla format therefore it is highly inappropriate to use works cited um, in a work in history now what is a bibliography well bibliography is simply a list of books it is a list of every source you plan to use for your research paper you only list your sources one time now remember i considered the citation notes to be your recipe and how you used your ingredients well the bibliography is your grocery list this is the list of ingredients this is the ingredients that you used and then the citations are how you use those ingredients so entries in a bibliography should always be alphabetized by the author's last name this is a difference than the citation citation is first name after the numeral but in a bibliography the last name comes first 
So it's alphabetized by author's last name. Entries are never numbered or never put into bullet points. So please do not number your bibliography and please do not put it within bullet points. A bibliographical entry must include all pertinent information leading to the publication of the work. It must have the name of the author, if available. It must have the title of the book. It must have the publishers, the date of publication. And if you got the information online, in many cases, it has to have the web address. Now, just like citations, um, in the bibliography, different types of sources use a slightly different format. Books, journals, um, they all have different information you must provide. So be sure you're consulting the guide for examples. Now here is a sample bibliography from that work that I showed you earlier, um, which happened to be part of my master's thesis. So at the very top, notice that I have it listed as a bibliography. You can call it references or bibliography, it doesn't matter to me. But when looking at the works, take a look at how these are formatted. The first work is a magazine article, okay? So last name, last name, comma, first name, period. Then within quotation marks, you'll do the, the, the article's name. In this case, it's Wilhelm II as Supreme Warlord in the First World War, comma, and then quotation marks. That is followed by the name of the magazine or journal. In this case, the journal is War in History, comma, and then the date that that was published, which is May 1998, comma. And then the pages that the article is in the book. So in the citations up above, you would give the specific page number you got the information from. In this, you are giving the entire article's page numbers. So the beginning of the page number, or the beginning of this article is on page 427. The conclusion of the article is on page 449. Remember, you're listing the sources overall in the bibliography, not specifically. In the second one, um, this is a book written by Heinrich Bruning. Um, Bruning, comma, Heinrich, period. The title of his book is Memoirs, New York, colon, Doubleday, comma, which is Doubleday Publishing, and then 1964. If you look at Cecil, Cowles, Hindenburg, they're all basically the same format. The only difference is Lamar Cecil's book, Wilhelm II, is a two-volume work. So you would notate that by comma two volumes. But otherwise, it's set up exactly how the Brunig um, uh, source is above. Now, Hitler's Mein Kampf is set up a little differently because I'm using a translation by Ralph Meinheim. So, Hitler, comma, Adolf, period, and then the book title is Mein Kampf, period. Then you would put translated by and the, and the person who translated it. In this case, it's Ralph Mannheim, period. This particular edition was published in Boston, so Boston, colon, published by Houghton Mifflin, comma, 1999. The next source is, again, a journal article. So last name Momsen, comma, Wolfgang, period. The title of the article, which is Kaiser Wilhelm II and German Politics, in quotation marks, followed by the name of that journal, the Journal of Contemporary History, comma, and then the date of publication. This was the May-June edition of the Journal of Contemporary History in 1990, followed by the page numbers that this article spanned. So pages 289 through 316. The next two sources, the Shire source and the Taylor source, are regular books. So they are as you would do the Brunig, Cecil, Cowles above. Now notice the next two sources. One of them is written by Wilhelm II, and the other has a line, a 10 um, keystroke line. What that line means is that 
it's the same author as above. So the author above is Wilhelm II, Emperor of Germany and King of Prussia. So the Aus Meinem Lieben, 1859 to 1888, would also be written by Wilhelm II, Emperor of Germany and King of Prussia. The only difference is in this case, we're not going to write it out because with that line, it, it, it makes you assume that that is who wrote it. Um, Wilson is a book, so author, last name, comma, first name, period, book title, The Incredible Kaiser, A Portrait of Wilhelm, William II. Um, he uses the anglicized name, William, instead of Wilhelm. Um, place of publication is London, colon, publisher is Robert Hale, comma, and then 1963. Finally, um, the article, Choosing the Lesser Evil, written by Heinrich Winkler. So it would be Winkler, comma, Heinrich August. Um, some people use their middle name, some doesn't. You can drop the middle name if you want, or you can keep it. It's, that's just totally up to you. The article name is Choosing the Lesser Evil, the German Social Democrats and the Fall of the Weimar Republic, um, followed by the Journal of Contemporary History. In this case, it was um, May, June, 1990, followed by the page numbers, which is um, two, uh, 205 through 228. The next example bibliography I just kind of made up from some of the things laying around in my library just so you had a second example. And obviously this is very Egypt centered because that's just what I pulled out of my Egyptian section. So notice that this bibliography is listed as references, first of all. Um, Aldridge. The Aldridge is a book. So notice last name, comma, first name, period, book title, Akhenaten, King of Egypt, um, was published in London, published by um, Thames and Hudson, comma, 1988. Now the second source, and that's why I brought this up, is this is a source that I added from a online college database. And the book title, and this was a book, is Ancient Egypt, Foundations of a Civilization. So what you do is you list it similarly to a regular book. In this case, last name, comma, first name, period, Brewer, comma, Douglas J. The title, Ancient Egypt, Foundations of a Civilization. The place that it was published, which was London, um, by Rutledge, comma, 2005. Then after that, you would notate that it was from an ebook collection, comma, and then where you got the ebook from. In this case, I got it from the EBSCO host. And then in parentheses, you would put what we call the um, accession number, where the number that this is labeled in the EBSCO host. And this is just a way for whoever's trying to check your work to be able to find that information. Now the next item is an actual journal article. It is a journal article that I got online. And notice again, the format is very similar. Last name, comma, first name, diamond, comma, Kellyanne. The article is Hatshepsut, Transcending Gender in Ancient Egypt. Um, the journal is called Gender and History. It's volume 32, notice that the 32 comes right after the title, but is not italicized, comma, and then number one. This is the number of the year, of, the, of that particular year. So this is the 32nd um, edition, 32nd year, 32nd volume, and it's number one. And in this case, the date of 32, number one, is March 2020. And then the pages within the entire journal, they're in page, this article is found in pages 168 through 189. Now, the database I got this from is the History Reference Center. And so you put the History Reference Center down, and then you put the accessible number, which is in this case there in the parentheses. 
Now, number four is El Mady. That's a book, Tutankhamun, The Life and Death of the Boy King. So you would set it up like the Aldridge um, entry. But the next one by Zahi Hawass is actually an article within a National Geographic magazine. And this is a magazine that I have on hand here on my desk. So it's last name, comma, first name, Hawass, comma, Zahi. The article name, which is Inside Egypt's Secret Vaults, Egypt's Forgotten Treasures. The title of the journal or magazine is obviously National Geographic, comma, and then the date of publication, which was January 2003. The next source is a little different in itself. This is an online source that I got to put in here. Doesn't kind of match with ancient Egypt, but I really couldn't find any Egypt primary sources. But this is a um, online document database from the Yale Avalon Project. So you would use the author who um, wrote the original article on this, and that's Claude H.W. Johns. So Johns, comma, Claude H.W. The article is the Code of Amurabi. The um, database I got it from is the, or the website is the Yale Avalon Project. You then provide the web address, which I have done here for you, and then the date that you accessed it, in this case, June 21st, 2020. Now, the only difference is if there is no author, you just don't put the author in and you start with the article name and the article first letter would then be alphabetized with the last name letters. But in this case, there was an author, so we, we did it that way. Oaks is a book, so you notice how it's set up. Now, notice there's two authors for this, so last name, comma, first name, and the second author. If you have three or more authors, you would do last name, comma, first name, et al, et dot al, which means and others. Um, I didn't have an example in here. I probably should have. Maybe I'll do that for the next one, next year's update. But the book title is Ancient Egypt. It was published in London, Hermes House, 2007. That's what that entry tells me. Now, notice there's a, a, an entry and then one below it with a line. That means that both of these sources were written by Joyce Tildesley, um, Hatshepsut, The Female Pharaoh, written published in New York by Penguin in 1996. That line tells me that the book Ramses, Egypt's Greatest Pharaoh, was also written by Joyce Tildesley, and it was published by Penguin in New York City in 2000. So there is a reason why this information is there. It tells the reader about the book. The Wallace Budge book, um, that is another book I had there on my shelf. It's just a regular book. Notice how it's set up. The next one is the article Valley of the Kings in National Geographic, written by Kent Weeks. So it's last name, comma, first name, period. The article is Valley of the Kings. National Geographic is underlined or italicized, followed by a comma. And then the month and the year that it was published, September 1998. Same thing with the next um, article. It's an article out of National Geographic um, written by A.R. Williams. So you would Williams, comma, A.R., period. Um, the article is, is in quotes, Egypt's animal mummies, pets of the pharaohs. National Geographic underlined or italicized, followed by a comma, and then that particular article was in the November 2009 edition. The last of those sources is by John Wilson. It, this is a book, The Culture of Ancient Egypt. It was written in, it was published in Chicago by the University of Chicago Press in 2013. So it's Wilson, comma, John A., the book title, The Culture of Ancient Egypt, Chicago, colon, University of Chicago Press, comma, and then 2013. Now, it was also an ebook that I got off the EBSCO host, so you would put ebook collection, comma, 
EBSCO host, and then the accessibility number, which is there in the parentheses. The following links are great tools to use when working on your research paper. The first I would suggest is the official Chicago Manual of Style online. Um, there is a link here on the slide and it will also be provided to you in the notes below. The second is Purdue University's online writing lab or as it's sometimes referred to Purdue Al. This is a great tool not just for citation but it can do a lot of good things when you're trying to set up your paper for, for formatting issues, um, writing critiques. I highly recommend the Purdue Online Writing Lab to all my students. The third is a PDF from the Los Angeles Harbor College on Chicago Turabian. Um, I found this recently and it is a great little printout that you can put in your notebook um, when working on Chicago or Turabian style.